exposed by the Lord's hand, verses 5 to 7. Um, as we continue, we, we see uh, some very interesting things. Verses uh, 5 to 7 reads, and this is where we need to pull the blindfold that we have on our eyes. And even sometimes we can be in the church and still have a partial blindfold on our eyes because we are not seeing the God whom we say we have come to worship. Exodus chapter uh, 7 uh, verse 5. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Yahweh. I am the Lord. When I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out the people of Israel from among them. So Moses begin to realize it's not what he is going to be doing. It's what God is going to be doing. And all he has to do is represent his God as a servant of the Almighty God. Isn't it amazing? You and I bring nothing to God's church. The only thing you can do is bring a servant's heart and then allow God to use you in the place of your giftedness. And so here we see verse uh, 6, Moses and Aaron did so. And I love this verse. They did just as the Yahweh commanded them. See, this time there's no modification of, well, God said this, but I think there's a better way. Many a times we, in the church of Jesus Christ, and sometimes it gets sickening, we think we can do and reach people's heart a better way than what God has given us. God calls us to be light and salt. Guess what? We want to put all kind of Hawaiian dress and have a lua and all that and thinking, you know, this is how we're going to reach people of God. Can I say to you very kindly, as I say to myself, God does not care about our gimmicks. He cares about our heart worship. Understanding who we are as we know who he is. And this was Moses' greatest difficulty. And now you see this man is being tuned from just coming to represent God, to do what God has asked him. You know, you call a CEO for a company because you want the company to prosper, or you call a great worker um, uh, in your company to boost your sales and all that. But here, God is going to take this man, and now you see God is going to tune him from just representing God to be the servant of the Almighty God. They did just as the Lord commanded them. Verse 7, Now Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. Listen, what kind of strategy is that? I mean, you know, in our day, in our age, uh, senior citizens are people you want to put aside in the corner. I'll tell you what, you are in God's hand. You are the Moses, you are the Aaron. You're saying, but pastor, I can hardly even walk. I don't care if you can walk. Your God knows what your limitations are. But he will take your limitations and he will magnify it. Can you imagine every time Moses wanted to read something? There was no dollar store where he could go and buy reading glasses. So where did he get his strength and his power from? Where did Aaron get his strength and his power from? You see, when God turns you from just representing him, you know, one of the things that you do, when he turns you to become a servant, he also enables you with the strength you need to carry out what he has called you to do. Take that to heart. Keep that in the uh, forefront of your thoughts. So, we come to the second part, God's credentials. Why does God have to give his credentials? You're saying, Pastor, you're going, man, I don't see that in, 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 in the text. Well, let's look at the text. Contest number one, prove yourself, verses eight and nine. Contest number two, Powers on display, verses 11 to 13. So verses uh, 7, verses 8 and 9. Then the Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Prove yourselves by working a miracle, 
Then you shall say to Aaron, remember Aaron is the prophet, take your staff and cast it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron cast down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a serpent. People, there is so much wealth in that that verse that we cannot explain, uh, explore the depth of it. But they now you're looking at two senior citizens, as we would call them today. They are going before this mighty king. I mean, this great ruler. To them, they are just cockroaches under his thumb. But that, but the Bible tells us, and they did just as the Lord commanded. The world is going to try to overwhelm the church. The world is going to try to suppress the church. It has been doing that, people. We don't exist because we are powerful. We exist because our God is all power, almighty, all powerful. And this is where uh, Moses and Aaron begin to see who the Lord is. And Moses begins to realize the one who has sent him to deliver his people out from the bondage of the Egyptians. So, let the contest begin. We're looking at God's credentials. So here, a simple uh, piece of stick, the shepherd's staff becomes a snake. But you know what's amazing? It doesn't stop there. Verses 11 to 13. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they, the magicians of Egypt, also did the same by their secret arts. For each man cast down his staff, and they became serpents, but Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Still Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Now remember, God has already primed Moses. I will harden Pharaoh's heart. So now Moses is beginning to realize the issue is not go there, get this done, and it will be done, no problem, no issues. Pharaoh will just fall down and say, yes, I will obey God's voice and this thing. Moses is beginning to see the power of who God is. And now God's credentials is beginning to register in Moses and Aaron's mind. And this is what, when Jesus said, who do men say I am? And Peter said, you are the son of the living God. Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood is not revealed that to you, but my father in heaven has revealed that to you. Just like God is revealing uh, himself to Moses and Aaron. You see, this is God's credentials. But what a gimmick. I mean, the sorcerers and the um, uh, magicians in, in Pharaoh's court were ab able to duplicate uh, turning their staff into into snakes. But remember, who's got swallowed up? And if you needed that walking stick, you were out if you were one of Pharaoh's uh, sorcerers and all that. But can I say to you, verse 13, still Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. Why? Because remember when he says, who is the Lord? Because Pharaoh looked upon himself as one of the gods of Egypt. That's how he lived. That's the mentality he had. So what it was, it was a personal challenge to the God of the Hebrews, to the God of Moses and Aaron. And now he's going to see it in the fullness. Thirdly, God's credentials prove to Pharaoh. He doesn't stop the people. Thirdly, God's power unleashed. Verses 14 to 25. Uh, there is so much in these passages in the Old Testament that many a times we have just gloated over and really missed out its significance. But anyway, please bear with me a few more minutes. First, God's judgment on the water, verses 14 to 19. Second, God's miracle matched, verses 20 to 22. And then third, I want you to see defiance. And when there's defiance, especially against God, we open up the Pandora's box of great suffering. 
the suffering that comes being part in this world, a broken, sinful world. But there's a defiance that brings suffering on the souls of men like no other. So the first plague, now remember, this is the first of the plagues, and I'm not even going to touch uh, how the River Nile was considered one of the gods of Egypt. That's what you'll find in the Egyptian art. There's a lot of crocodile pictures and uh, cobra uh, pictures and all that. And all everything was worshipped in, in, uh, uh, in Egypt. And the Nile, there was a god of the Nile. And now starts the contest, the first plague. Water turned to blood. Exodus chapter 7, verse 14 um, to 19. God's judgment on the water. The Lord, the Yahweh said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Moses saying, yes, Lord, I can see it. I feel it. But when God says to Moses, Pharaoh's heart has been hardened, Moses needs to understand, and God wants Moses to understand. You see, I am the one who's working on Pharaoh's heart. I am the one who's hardening his heart. Moses, do you see? I can reach out into a man and do the unthinkable. You know, Ben Carson was a neurosurgeon in, uh, in the United States of America, one of the best. But here, Moses is seeing God's power unleashed. Now remember I said, there are some interesting things that we need to see. What happens here? So as we read the text, God says to uh, Moses, go to Pharaoh, verse 15, go to Pharaoh in the morning, as he's going out to the water, stand on the bank of the Nile to meet him. And to take in your hand the staff that is turned into a serpent. And you will say to him, the Yahweh, the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, the God of the Hebrews has sent to me, saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness, but so far you have not obeyed. Well, one God to another, who, who are you that I should obey you? And now Pharaoh is going to learn that lesson. But there's a greater lesson that Moses is going to learn. Verse 17. Thus says the Yahweh. By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, with the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water that is in the Nile, and it shall turn into blood. The fish in the Nile shall die, the Nile will stink, and the Egyptian will go weary of drinking water from the Nile. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff, Stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the rivers, their canals, and their ponds, and all their pools of water, so that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout the land of Egypt, even in the vessels of wood and vessels of stone. There's some very deep and amazing thing. First, I want you to look at the concept of blood. The Bible in the Old Testament, God will give instruction, do not have anything to do with blood, to eat blood, because blood is the life uh, of that animal, so the blood was spilled out. Here, God is going to turn this place where they got their fresh water to bathe, to cook, to eat, to drink, and all that, and here it has been turned into blood. What is the judgment? 